Hi everybody, this is lesson 82 on page 560. Today we are going to be learning about the area of a circle. This lesson starts out with some review on the area, how to find the area of several different shapes. So let's review those first and then we're going to get into learning about the area of a circle. So let's get started. Okay, in the beginning of this lesson, it reviews the area of several shapes that we've already learned about. First of all, the area of a rectangle. We've already learned that to find the area of a rectangle, we multiply the length, which is the bottom part. I also like to call that the base, times the width. I also like to call that the height. And when they have these letters next to each other, it means multiply. So length times width. We've also learned about finding the area of a parallelogram and those we use the base times the height. The height is the distance from the bottom line to the top line, never the slanted line. So the area of a parallelogram, which is a four-sided shape, area of a parallelogram is base times the height, the distance from the bottom to the top. We've also learned about the area of a triangle, which is simply multiplying the base times the height which is the same thing as the rectangle and the parallelogram, except in a triangle, we always, always, always divide by two because the area of a triangle is half of a rectangle or half of a parallelogram. So it would be base times height divided by two. And now we are looking at the area of a circle. And the area of a circle, the formula that we need to learn is pi, which we have already remembered that pi can be represented with 3.14 or it can be 22 over 7. And usually the book will tell you um, which number to, you, to use, either the decimal or the fraction. But we take pi times the radius squared. And the radius squared means the radius times the radius, not the radius times 2. So let's, we're going to focus on this, on this uh, figure here. I'm going to erase these up here and we'll get started focusing on that. We've learned before about the circumference of a circle. When we do the circumference of a circle, we have the diameter is what we use in that. And so to find the circumference, I'll use C for that, it would be pi times the diameter. So either 3.14 or 22 over 7 times the distance from one side to the other side going straight through the middle. For example, let's just say 10. So that would be pi times 10 basically. And that's all you have to do to figure that out. Well, in the area of a circle, we're not using the whole diameter all the way across. We're using just the radius from the center to the edge. At the radius, oftentimes the book shows it this way, showing the radius going this way. But sometimes the radius is shown going this way, sometimes it's shown going this way, sometimes it's shown that way, or that way. It could be anywhere, as long as it starts at the middle point and it ends at the outer, at the outer edge. That is the radius. So let's just say, I'm going to rewrite this up here. So let's just say we always have our center point and there's our radius. Let's say our radius is 3. And let me erase this down here for just a moment. So if our radius is 3, then to find the area, it would be pi times the radius squared. Pi, and if they don't specify in the problem whether to use the decimal or the fraction, generally we use the decimal, so that's what I'm going to use here. So if pi is represented by 3.14 times, I'm going to use the time symbol here, the radius is 3 from the center to the edge, 3 squared. Now we know 3 squared would be 3 times 3. This is 3 times 3, not 3 times 2. The square does not mean times 2. The square means 3 times itself, 2 times itself there, like that. Okay, so 3 times 3 is going to be 9. So that means we're, to figure this out, we're going to have 3, excuse me, 3.14 times 9. And if you work that out, it will get you the area. In this case, it will be 9 times 4 is 36. And 9 times 1 is 9 plus 3 is 12. 9 times 2 is 27 plus 1 is 28. We have two decimal places, so we go 1, 2. And that is our area. 
Now, if you have to go with whatever dimensions they tell you, for example, if it's centimeters, you would put centimeters and then you put squared because whenever we have area, we always put the dimensions in squared. Okay, that's basically the premises of this lesson. This lesson does give some background information as far as how people figure this out, how mathematicians figure this out. Um, what they say is that if you would take, make this into a square here, then this is the radius three, and the radius here would also be three. And we know that the area of a square would be three times three, so the area of this whole square would be nine. And then what they say do is, well, let's do that all the way around, making four boxes, knowing that each of them have a radius of three, which means base times height is, th is three times three. Each of them have an area of nine, so nine, 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 four nines is 36. But we know that's gotta be too high because some of this space is not part of the circle. So we know this is not all part of the circle. So we know this is a, a high estimate, and that's kind of how they figure that out. But using pi, you get the accurate information. You get the accurate measurement. So let's look at the examples that are given in the book. And there is basically one example with three parts to it. Um, so let's go through each part. So this would be example A. Let's look at example, excuse me, example A. All right, it gives us a circle. It tells us the diameter is, I'm sorry, the radius is 10 centimeters. So let's put our formula over here. Area is pi <clears throat> times the radius squared. And so in A, it tells us to use 3.14 for pi. So when we work this out, we know that, that pi is going to be 3.14 times, I'm going to put my little multiplication symbol, the radius squared. So the radius is 10, and we squared just that number. That actually looks like scientific notation, but we're going to figure this part out first. 10 squared would be 100, and so 3.14 times 100. You can probably figure this out in your head, but I'll go ahead and work it out just to show you. So 3.14 times 100, bring your zeros down, and we have 4, we have 1, we have 3, we have two decimal places here, 1, 2, so we go 1, 2. And so our answer then is 3.14 centimeters squared. And that's how you figure that out using that one. Let's look at example B. Example B has a circle and it gives us a radius of 7 inches. So we use the same formula. In this problem, it tells us to use 22 over 7 for pi. So we're going to do 22 over 7. And we know that we have to take our radius squared, which is 7. So radius squared, 7 squared. You can probably already figure that out. 7 squared is 49. And since this needs to be in fraction form, we're going to do 49 over 1. So it works out nicely. And if you look at that, we can cancel. 7 and 49 can do some canceling. 7 can go into itself once. 7 can go into 49 7 times. And then we just need to figure out 22 times 7. Can't do that in my head. I'm going to work that out. 2 times 7 is 14. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 1 is 15. So we have 154 inches squared. And that would be our answer for the area of that circle. All right, let's look at example C. Example C, it gives us a circle. In this case, it doesn't give us the radius. It actually gives us the diameter all the way across. It tells us our diameter is 12 feet. So first of all, we need to stop there and figure out what our radius is. The radius is always going to be half of what the diameter is because the diameter is just the radius going here to here and the radius going here to here. So half of 12 would be 6. I'm just going to write that down there so we don't forget. Radius is 6 feet. And in this problem, it tells us to leave pi as pi. So we're simply going to have pi times 6 squared. And so that means when we bring that down, pi times 6 times 6 is 36. So we don't do anything with this. We don't put in 3.14. We don't put in 22 over 7. We leave this as pi. So our answer is actually going to come out 36 pi. Always put the number first, then put the pi. 
Then we put the dimensions feet squared. And that's how we work those out. So hopefully that makes sense. The formula for pi is just one that you are going to have to memorize. It's always pi times the radius squared. And don't get that confused with the circumference, which is pi times the, di the diameter. And you don't square the diameter. It's just pi times diameter for the circumference, the distance around. For the area in the circle, it's pi times the radius squared. That means it times itself. For, for squared. So if you have any questions, let me know.